All right, guys, remember in Static Cardiology 3, one of our rhythms involved uh, tachycardia. And so we wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about the ACLS algorithm, adult tachycardia with a pulse. Remember, in all circumstances, you want to treat your patient and not your monitor. And remember, algorithms are there to design, they're designed to guide our thinking and help us make informed decisions based on our patient's signs and symptoms. So, brief overview on ACLS adult tachycardia uh, with a pulse algorithm. First and foremost, this is probably involving uh, a rate of about 150 beats a minute or higher. Secondly, you always want to make sure that you're attending to your patient's ABCs, right? Do they have an adequate airway? Are they breathing? Uh, are they breathing well? How's their circulation? Okay. So once you've sort of addressed those three things, now we're going to move a little bit farther down the line. Do they have a persistent tachycardia? And along with that rhythm, are they hypotensive? Are they having chest pain? Are they showing signs of shock? Um, other things that are concerning to you? If so, right at that point, we're probably going to start talking about synchronized cardioversion to try and reverse that circumstance. If they're not, we're going to go a little bit farther down again. And again, we're at a decision-making point. Is our rhythm more narrow or is it wider? And then we can talk about different types of pharmacology, including adenosine and amiodarone. Okay. In our algorithm, if it appears that we have a wide tachycardia, then we're going to focus on amiodarone as our drug of choice. Amio is kind of like a utility player on the baseball team. It can cover a variety of areas. It can work in multiple places in the heart. If it's a narrow rhythm, such as SVT, then we're going to focus on adenosine as our first drug of choice because adenosine is more of a specialist. That relief pitcher, you need to come in and deal with a very specific point in the game and it's going to deal with those and it will slow down the conduction at the top part of the heart and then if it was in fact something like SVT, then hopefully it's resolved or if it was something else, let's say AFib, then we can continue our thinking with either a different drug or a different approach to treatment. You might be asking yourself then, what if I have a wide QRS? Because there's a point in the algorithm where it points us on a particular path and it includes information such as consider adenosine only if your rhythm is regular and monomorphic. When we just talked about adenosine is primarily used for narrow complex tachycardia we believe are happening at the top of the heart such as SVT. Well, remember, first of all, treat your patient, not your monitor. Second, there's a spot in both of those boxes that says consider expert consultation. So if you're not sure, that's a good time to get a second opinion because we want to do the right thing for our patient. Now let's talk a little bit about why you might actually want to consider adenosine in these circumstances. There are some times where the rhythm is, the beat is generating from the top part of the heart and there's some aberrancy going on. Remember aberrancy means it's an odd shape within that rhythm, right? And so it's giving that wide appearance and it's regular and monomorphic, so every beat looks the same and is evenly spaced, that's when they're saying, okay, let's consider adenosine. Adenosine is going to slow that conduction rate and either confirm, yeah, that's what it was, or show us some other underlying rhythm that we can treat appropriately. And that's why they put that into the algorithm, is for those sorts of circumstances. If you've got that wide QRS and it's irregular, then we're moving on and we're going to talk about amiodarone, if our patient's not showing concerning signs, or if they are, we're going to go back to synchronized cardioversion. So coming back to adenosine, adenosine is for when we've got that regular rhythm that we have strong conviction is coming from the upper part of the heart, because that's going to slow that conduction rate and that's going to give us a chance to give that heart a chance to reset, assuming that our patient is otherwise doing well. So that's why I mentioned earlier, adenosine is really for that specific instance where we've got a pretty good handle on what our issue is, and amiodarone is going to give us a little more flexibility when we know we've got some sort of a tachycardia going on and our patient is uh, not showing concerning signs, so we have some time to work on. And I want to re-emphasize also, if you're not sure, get a second opinion, call online medical direction, and remember we're always going to treat our patient and not our monitor. 
So something we talk a lot about uh, in the program here is treat your patient, not your monitor. And so people will reply back in the comments and say, what do you mean treat your patient, not the monitor? And that's exactly what we mean. The person you actually have in front of you, how do they present? What do they look like? What are they telling you? What are they describing? You need to focus on that in addition to the information that your monitor is providing. We don't want to treat a piece of electronic equipment. We want to treat the human who's sitting in front of us who's having trouble. Our algorithms are there to help focus our thinking and keep us pointed in the right direction, but they're not meant to replace our good understanding of what our specific patient needs at that time. Remember guys, cardiology is a dense subject and all of these videos are designed to help you better understand how to tackle that subject. If you have a question we haven't addressed yet or if you have a comment for us, we'd love to hear your feedback. The information is below on how to get a hold of us. Thanks very much for watching.